What's up guys, Phase on Flux here with episode 2 of Let's Play Metroid Zero Mission. In the last episode, we arrived on planet Zebus, the base of operations of the space pirate organization. We have orders to defeat the Mother Brain, the leader of said organization. In today's episode, we are going to explore more of this inhospitable planet by making use of the missile upgrade that we received in the last episode. So, continuing on the right, through the missile door, we see essentially a dead end. But it turns out that we can actually jump up here, which was something it took me a while to figure out on my own without using a guide. I didn't end up using a guide to figure this out, but without using a guide, it took me a while just on my first playthrough to figure that out. So I could use some missiles to speed up destroying those little sack things which kept spawning those annoying little fly things, but I figured just mashing the B button works just fine. Coming down here, we see we can't actually destroy those blocks yet, but maybe we can do so later. So coming down here, we get another missile tank. This is actually the second possible room that you can fight King Worm in if you fail to defeat him in the other room. So I just felt like pointing that out. So you can either come to this room or the room that I showed off earlier to fight him. And also in this room, we have our first energy tank which uh, expands our maximum life by another 99 points. So that's very handy to obtain, for sure. I also apologize if you guys can hear the rain outside. It actually started pouring down literally right as I started hitting the record button. So instead of waiting for the rain to pass, because I have no idea how long it will last, I'm just going to pray that it's not too bad. So, continuing further right and heading down through a missile door, we come to our first map room, which will greatly expand the number of rooms that we have vision of here in the Brinstar area. And as you can notice down at the bottom, we actually can see that there's another area branching off from here called Norfair. I wonder if we'll be visiting there soon. But anyways, just uh, exploring the rest of the areas that we have access to currently, we're going to go ahead and head through this first door that we get to up top. The room just to the left here that I am in front of leads to another save room, so I'll skip over that for now, but it's there in case you guys need it. Continuing up north, I also apologize, this room in particular really slows my emulator down, and I can't quite figure out why. So I apologize for that, but uh, hopefully we won't be here for too much longer. One more missile door, and we get another suit upgrade, the Bonds which finally allow us to attack while in morph ball mode. It's as simple as pressing the B button and we have a slightly delayed bomb. Go figure, they are called bombs after all. But if we actually sneak over to the left of the Chozo statue, we can obtain more missiles. The bombs also let you jump a short distance if you are on top of the explosion of the bomb itself. Also, those bombs don't hurt you, so don't worry about taking damage from your own weapons. So, going to try and leave the area, but we will notice that the door is blocked because it's gray, which means we have enemies to kill. So, the game's just going to show off what the bombs can do by unleashing a bunch of these little parasite things. If you have more than four of them on you at once, they start doing damage, but otherwise they're harmless. Oh, I still have one on me, so the door won't open. But yeah, just roll back and forth and use some bombs, and it shouldn't take you more than a couple seconds to uh, get rid of them. So, hopefully, we can figure out where to go next. Uh, we actually are not quite able to head further up, so the only thing we can do is begin the backtracking. But now that we have access to bombs, we should be able to reach other areas that we couldn't before. And hopefully I'll stop falling in this acid, because it's kind of annoying to get out of. I just gotta be a little more careful with my jumps. Ignoring all those shriek bats. Actually, I think those aren't called Shriek Bats. If I am wrong about them being called Shriek Bats, I apologize, but I know they're called Shriek Bats in the Prime series, so that's why I assumed they were here. But those little blocks that have the little circle indicate that a bomb could destroy it, so just doing what I did just now, we can return further down than it otherwise looked like we'd be able to, and we reach another Chozo statue, who will show us another suit upgrade, and it looks like we will be going into the deeper depths of the Norfair region. So now we know what we're doing, 
and the only thing we can really do is just go for it. Thank you very much, Chozo Statue. So also these little enemies here are very durable for enemies at this point in the game at least. But the game's only going to get harder from here on out, so you're going to have to get used to it. Gotta love the diagonal shot. I'm not sure if that was in the original version of this game or not. In case you guys didn't know, for whatever reason, Zero Mission is a remake of the original Metroid for the NES. So there's nothing too special about it. I mean, it does have some extra stuff in it, but otherwise it's just a remake. But yeah, I'm not sure if they had the diagonal um, shot ability in the original. So coming down here, we have a very annoying room. Basically, you have to drop down there, use a Morph Ball Bomb to get rid of that block that's right in front of you. Meanwhile, these fly things keep constantly spawning, so you're not going to get a breather. You just got to be quick and very tenacious. Okay. Sorry, it was hard for me to explain what to do there and do it at the same time. So basically, you drop down once, hold hugging the wall to uh, lay a bomb. The bomb will destroy the block in front of it, allowing passage. Then, ignoring these fly things and platforming your way up, you have to go through it and drop down again. Once again, hugging the wall, and you shouldn't have a problem actually reaching into the cavern. The problem is just ignoring all those constantly spawning bat things. Or not bats, flies, whatever you want to call them. Let's see. I need the block below me to respawn. Ah, uh, okay. That's it. Just gotta be patient. Okay. There we go. Leave me alone. Thank you very much. Oh, I hate these things so much. But um, before we actually head into the Norfair region, I say we do just a tiny bit more backtracking to pick up one more uh, upgrade that we have access to. So, if you notice, we haven't quite been up north. This is the original or not the original shaft, but one of the original shafts that we have already explored in Brinstar, where heading down below is the first room where you can encounter King Worm. So just heading up from that, we reach a point where we can no longer go up. Up, we can go to the right. So more falling under here. Shooting the little red area of this thing makes it stand up. Having some bombs here, let's us go through. Now, if I remember correctly, we want to take the top pipe here. And go all the way over. That is what we needed to do, after all. We can't jump up there, as it turns out. But what we can do is continue to go to the right and find a save room. Which I will be skipping over for now, at least. Heading more to the right, we should be able to find the expansion that we are looking for. And there it is, another missile tank. Once again, if I'm not mistaken, we reach it at it. Yeah, there's not really a way to jump over into that tube. We have morph ball capabilities, but there's nothing else we can do. And also, as you saw there, there's a way to go down from there, but the acid kind of eats away at our suit, so that I'm going to go ahead and write off as inaccessible for the time being. I keep forgetting that enemy's there too. Sometimes these enemies are just so ignorable, but other times they're not. So sometimes I forget where they are, Heading all the way back through the tube, and hopefully it won't take too much longer before we reach the room that we can enter the Norfair area in, because, as I mentioned before, that's our next destination. It's actually the room where we originally fought King Worm in. So that very bottom room of this shaft here is the destination that we have. We have our targets locked on it, and I'm going in. Assuming I don't take a bunch of more unnecessary damage. So right now my life energy is pretty low. And zoomers are just dropping missiles right now. That's kind of annoying, but can't really be helped. I'll just have to be a little bit more careful. Remember, there's a bug here. Good. Glad I remembered that time. That would have been really embarrassing otherwise. So as you can see, there's some bombs that we need to blow up. Bam. So this was a dead end before, but now it's not. And so that's kind of the style this Metroid game will take. 
Uh, lots of puzzle solving in the sense of exploration. You really gotta use your noodle when playing this game. You gotta wonder, hmm, what areas have I been to before, and now that I have a new weapon, what can I now access? But, upon entering Norfair, we get a nice little cutscene of Mother Brain herself. Our target, but it looks like we are also her target, because she is aware of our presence, she knows where we are, and she knows our intentions. So, we're gonna have to be a little bit more careful. But, here we finally enter the next area of Norfair. Much deeper, and as we'll get a sneak peek of just a little bit later, much hotter. But, I think the save point's a good place to call it quits, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope that you'll join me next time as we explore the Norfair region, and you guys have a blessed day.